And I do a lot of teaching for where do people get stuck and what's uh, the place where um, they've done a lot of reading, but they still are struggling with, um, is this healthy? Is this safe? Um, so this past couple of weeks, I've been writing more about the, the hiccups where people get, they fall off the keto wagon, they go to their doctor and their doctor says something that really doesn't connect with what is um, truthful about the ketogenic diet. But boy, there aren't textbooks that doctors can go out and read about this. It really does take a lot of time to understand this and to head into some papers that can really kind of gloss your eyes over. So um, I'm going to tackle the fiber concept um, on this. All right. So we're going to talk about the truth about fiber. Uh, again, um, what we talk about in the fiber concept is um, when people play a game, they play a game on the ketogenic diet that has to do with fiber um, and subtracting fiber from the carbs. And so you say, well, why would they do that? And it has a lot to do with some of the very, the chemistry behind what is fiber. Um, that I, in my first book, but I will repeat this in my second book, say do not play the game of fiber where you're saying, but doc, it only has four carbs because I got to subtract 16 fiber. I don't encourage you to play that game. I'm going to go a little bit more into why as I go through these slides. So let's start with reminding you that um, carbohydrates are made up of simple sugars. Uh, so yeah, the carbs are sugars. When we talk about that, people think once they've been on the ketogenic diet, it's pretty uh, common language to hear that carbohydrates and, and glucose are very connected. But when many people first starting on the ketogenic diet look at a potato, they don't see sugar. Um, my brain sees sugar. And the longer you're on a ketogenic diet, especially if you're checking your sugars, um, you can see uh, sugar when you look at a baked potato as well. But uh, when I when you get very uh, simple, these carbs are made up of really three types of sugars. One of them is glucose, one of them is fructose, and one of them is galactose. So as we put in those carbohydrates into our systems, our body breaks down into these three basic components. Uh, these are the most common simple sugars or simple carbohydrates found in our system. And when we look at the overall nutrients that our bodies require, um, carbohydrates and these simple sugars are not essential. And I think that's a really powerful thing to remember. I have a, a chapter in my first book called Fruit is Evil, and it gets a lot of flack, but it, it is kind of cutting to the chase to say, no, 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 no. If you look at the place fruit originated, uh, it was nothing like the engineered sweet gigantic sized fruits that we have today. And even as recently as 2019, we have affirmation from um, the biochemists that carbohydrates are not essential. You do not need them to live. And as much as my textbook said that when I was in medical school, that our brains needed glucose to survive, that is absolutely an evidence-based answer that carbohydrates are not essential. You do not need to eat them. Your body cannot live without certain proteins. Your body cannot live without certain minerals and vitamins. Your body cannot live without certain fats, but it can live without, without carbohydrates, period. So remember that as we go forward. Uh, as I look at um, the two types, so carbohydrates are simple sugars. We, they come in monosaccharides or one sugars, and they come in disaccharides. So I know that sounds really sciencey, but hang in there. Monosaccharides are these simple carbohydrates and we take uh, those monos and we put them in pairs. Here's an example of two sugars put together. They take glucose, add fructose, and you get sucrose. And that is what table sugar is. So again, you took two, car you took carbohydrates and you made another carbohydrate by combining them together. You, you had them, those two molecules hold hands and that's how we get table sugar. The place that that comes from is sugar cane and sugar beets, but once it's broken down into our system, glucose goes to one area, fructose goes to a little different uh, source, um, so they're broken down from the, from the two carbohydrates to the one. Another example is we have glucose uh, and we add another glucose and that is maltose, which is found in many candies or cereals. Um, it's a product of starch, uh, kind of like a digestion, but it is dissolvable. You find it in barley and other grains. So it's found in nature, but we can also make it. Uh, maltose is again, glucose plus glucose. 
So that's another place where carbohydrates do their thing. Another example is lactose. So people say, oh, I'm lactose intolerant. What does that mean? Well, that means the enzyme to break down this glucose plus galactose is either very wimpy in their body or maybe even missing. But this is a disaccharide. It's a two sugars put together, and that is another carbohydrate. Um, I also think it's great to show you a man-made carbohydrate uh, where we took fructose and we took galactose. We put them together, and this would be considered um, a non-absorbable or in, um, you can't absorb this one. It's man-made. It's called lactulose, and I will give you this when I'm asking you to prepare for a colonoscopy, but it's the perfect bridge to take you from uh, this is not a concept that is uh, new. We know that there are certain carbohydrates that go from one end to the other, and there are lots of people out there in the food industry playing games with you. So just a quick reminder, carbohydrates are not essential. Carbohydrates uh, have simple sugars. Uh, we have the monosaccharides, which have one sugar, the disaccharides, which we put two of them together, and now we're going to go to something called polysaccharides. And this is where we come up with fiber. All right, so polysaccharides are glucoses put in a chain. And some of them are digestible, like the starch we just mentioned had a two component uh, uh, chain, but there are lots of digestible fibers that are much longer. Uh, several other videos, you've heard me talk about glycogen. This is also digestible. We can, we can digest the glycogen from another animal, but we also make glycogen. When glucose is hanging around and we want to store it for a later date, we put that glycogen in our liver cells and in our muscle cells. Fiber is another polysaccharide, a bunch of carbohydrates put together, but it is not digestible. And in the not digestible form, I remind patients that these are, again, carbohydrates put into your system, that the fiber is not an essential nu nutrient, and that those carbohydrates, as they are processed, um, become a spike for stimulating insulin. Um, when when I look at some of the most powerful places that I have had these teachable moments, uh, they start with what does fiber do for us and why is it so promoted? Uh, and you'll find several myths out there trying to quote studies where they've looked at fiber and they've studied them for a long period of time and they're saying, this is healthy for you. And I will tell you that's just not present. The long-term fiber studies saying it prevents cancer or um, my favorite one is that um, it helps you, uh, it, it increases your transit time so you push the nutrients past your gut faster because fiber helps your bowels move. Um, I, I also like the one that says um, you need fiber to stretch your colon. Um, uh, again, when you're in, in a ketogenic setting, that, uh, that glucose um, that is found in fiber, that's the part that I really want you to remember. We do not need glucose to survive. Uh, if you look at the, the terms uh, of health recommendations, when I hear a new recommendation or a study that um, the, the, they've asked us to use as guidelines, I, I wanna sort out why is that evolutionarily present? So when, when I was on the bandwagon for many years saying we need 30 to 50 grams of fiber, uh, you now get several organizations out there saying, but if you're going to have that much fiber, you got to keep the carbs low. And um, uh, but it, they actually talk about sugars low. Uh, they don't like, they're not quite saying carbs that I hear them saying. When they look at that, though, the, the amount of sugar consumed in the foods to get the fiber is far past the guidelines. And I would contend if you look at um, what your body sees as you absorb those sugars, as you absorb those um, disaccharides or polysaccharides, and your body tries to break them down, now the glucose goes into your system and your, your body did not care where it came from. That it came from a fiber uh, component says, yes, it did absorb the glucose slower. But I would contend that if you compare the, the patients who use a high fiber, even when it's fresh greens, and you compare that to 
um, those who are ketogenic and don't get as much fiber, their glucose is much better controlled than the people who are trying to play the, the fiber game, eating fiber, uh, trying to reach the goals of the 30 grams of fiber a day, uh, and then screwing it up, watching what happens when um, they do a Dr. Boz ratio, they check the numbers uh, on, um, on their own system. Don't, don't let this be a guideline for the population when we live in a day where you can look at your own system. And boy, our support group uh, has story after story of patients that show up saying, Dr. Boz, I just can't seem to lose weight. I really uh, find that the, um, the weight loss um, is uh, at a stall and you get a little deeper into their conversation and they are having just a ton of carbohydrates uh, in the form of fiber. And as soon as you get them to check their finger and look at their numbers, this light comes on like, what do you mean I shouldn't eat fiber? Uh, and this brings me to another- Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.